Soon, another autonomous SpaceX Dragon cargo ship is slated to launch to the International Space Station. The CRS-22 mission is set to bring thousands of kilograms of crew supplies, experiments, and new hardware for the outpost, including the first of three pairs of new solar arrays to augment the 20-year-old outpost's aging solar array wings. With these new ISS rollout solar arrays, the space station is expected to have the power it needs to continue operating through the end of this decade. They'll also allow countless more scientific experiments and demonstrations to be performed aboard the ISS as NASA and its international partners continue to transition human-tended research in low Earth orbit to commercial organizations and outposts, while beginning the process of expanding humanity out to the moon and beyond. Before getting into the video, I want to welcome all new subscribers to the channel and thank everybody for engaging in comments. I really do appreciate it. I want to also let you know that I recently set up a Discord server where we as a community can continue to talk about various human spaceflight topics outside of YouTube. Finally, if you want to help me in my goal to eventually focus on orbital velocity full time, I've set up a Patreon page. Depending on the level you pledge at, you can get access to exclusive graphics, provide input on scripts, and even get your name in future videos. You can follow the QR codes at the screen or click on the links in the video's description below. If you can't support Orbital Velocity financially, that's perfectly alright. All you need to do is watch and share this video and launch that like button into orbit. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss another video. Now let's take a look at the CRS-22 Cargo Dragon mission to the International Space Station. CRS-22 is the 22nd dedicated SpaceX cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station and the second under the second commercial resupply services contract. It's carrying with it about 3,328 kilograms of crew supplies, experiments, and new hardware for the seven-person Expedition 65 ISS crew. It's also the second cargo variant of the upgraded Dragon 2 spacecraft, the first having launched in December 2020. The Cargo Dragon is visually similar to Crew Dragon. However, it doesn't include eight Super Draco engines that would be used in the event of an abort during a human spaceflight. Moreover, there aren't any windows or seats for this spacecraft, and the unpressurized trunk section only has two fins rather than four. CRS-22 is slated to launch atop a Falcon 9 rocket from Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A in Florida. The first stage for this rocket is Core B-1067. It's notable as the first SpaceX Falcon 9 flight in 2021 that is entirely new. All previous launches this year have used flight-proven boosters. Likewise, the capsule for this mission, C-209, is also new. All Dragon 2 capsules are designed to be used up to five times, so this particular spacecraft is expected to be flown again in the future. As of this video's publication, launch of CRS-22 is expected to occur on June 3rd, 2021. Check the description below for exact details on the time, especially if the launch is delayed. Assuming an on-time liftoff, this cargo dragon is expected to arrive at the International Space Station in the early morning hours of June 5th, docking with the space-facing side of the Harmony module at International Docking Adapter 3. After equalizing pressure between the ISS and CRS-22 hatches and checking for leaks, the ISS crew is expected to open the hatches and begin the process of unloading the spacecraft's contents and eventually reloading it with equipment and experiments slated for return to Earth at the conclusion of the craft's mission. The most notable item included in the CRS-22 manifest is a pair of ISS rollout solar arrays, also called IROSA. Once at the outpost, the robotic Canadarm2 is set to remove the IROSA container, which has a total mass of about 1,380 kilograms, and move it to a staging location for spacewalking astronauts to attach them to two solar array wings on the P6 truss segment, located on the far port side of the space station's integrated truss structure. When the space station was assembled in the 2000s, it included eight massive 12 by 35 meters solar array wings on several outbound truss segments. The first truss launched, P6, included two of these solar array wings. It was attached in a temporary location in 2000 while waiting for the initial core of the integrated truss structure to be assembled over several space shuttle missions. However, because of assembly delays stemming from the Space Shuttle Columbia accident in 2003, the next solar array wings wouldn't be launched until 2006 with the final pair being attached in 2009. The original arrays were given an on-orbit life of about 15 years. As time goes on, the harsh environment of space slowly degrades the solar cells on the arrays and collectively they are currently generating up to 160 kilowatts of power according to NASA. Half of that power generated during orbital daylight is stored in batteries on the truss for use during orbital night. 
To augment the station's power production, NASA plans to launch six iRosas over three Cargo Dragon missions. Once fully attached, power production is expected to boost to about 215 kilowatts. While a pair of iRosa canisters can fit into a SpaceX trunk, which is only about 3.7 meters wide, when unfolded and extended, each is expected to be 6 meters wide and 19 meters long. More efficient than the original array wing solar cells, this array can produce 20 kilowatts of power. It will be attached to a structure already assembled by spacewalking astronauts on the mass canisters of the existing P6 truss solar arrays and be angled 10 degrees from the original blankets. While the new arrays will shadow some of the cells of the original, combined it will produce more than the original array did when it was new. Two other pairs of iRoses are expected to be launched and delivered on future Cargo Dragon spacecraft in 2022. The rollout solar array concept was first tested in 2017, when the much smaller ROSA hardware was unrolled to verify its stability and power collection capabilities. Once its job was done, the robotic arm released the array, letting it float away from the outpost. It would eventually fall back to Earth, burning up in the atmosphere. This test brings back memories of another solar array test in the early 1980s. During the maiden flight of Space Shuttle Discovery, mission STS-41D, the OAST-1 Solar Array, sponsored by NASA's Office of Aeronautics and Space Technology, was deployed. Attached in the orbiter's payload bay, this 4-meter-wide lightweight array design utilized an accordion-like blanket and compactable truss inside a canister. When stowed, the full package was only 9 centimeters thick, but when extended, it reached upward of 32 meters. During STS-41D, the crew would evaluate the stability and versatility of the new array design. The design would ultimately be used on a larger scale for the International Space Station and its 8 12 meter by 35 meter solar array wings. While IROSA is being used to augment the power of the ISS, a similar design is expected to be used for the power and propulsion element of the Lunar Gateway when it launches to cislunar orbit as early as 2024. While new hardware being added to the outpost is always exciting, the purpose of this new hardware is to allow the many scientific experiments and technology demonstrations to be performed. CRS-22 is set to launch 920 kilograms of new science investigations. One of the dozens of experiments is called the Cell Science 04 study, which aims to characterize the molecular biology of tardigrades, better known as water bears. The goal is to find genes involved in their adaptation and survival in high-stress environments. The UMAMI experiment, Understanding of Microgravity on Animal-Microbe Interactions, is designed to examine the effects of spaceflight on molecular and chemical interactions between beneficial microbes and their animal hosts, according to NASA. The hope is to better understand gravity's role in shaping these interactions by using a simplified symbiosis between the bobtail squid and the bacteria called Vibro fissuri. Additionally, the Kidney Cells O2 investigation is expected to use a 3D kidney cell model to study the effects of microgravity during the formation of microcrystals that can lead to kidney stones. The results of this study could help develop better therapies to treat and prevent kidney stones for not only astronauts, but for the 10% of people that develop them, according to NASA. Cotton root systems are also going to be studied in the TikTok experiment, which stands for Targeting Improved Cotton Through On-Orbit Cultivation. The goal is to learn how to develop cotton varieties that require the use of less water and pesticides. On the hardware side of things, the crew is expected to test Pilot, a virtual reality device to test remote operations of robotic arms and other spacecraft, potentially optimizing workstations for future space missions, according to NASA. There is also a portable ultrasound device aboard CRS-22 that NASA astronauts will test in microgravity. NASA said it could become a critical medical capability for crews on long-term space flights, such as those for the Moon and Mars. Other items being launched include a new Zarya control module Kurs unit to help cosmonauts remotely control the docking of Russian spacecraft, a portable water dispenser filter, and commercial off-the-shelf air tanks. Once CRS-22 is unloaded, it'll be reloaded with items bound for a safe return to Earth for study or refurbishment. This includes the Catalytic Reactor Developmental Test Objective, the Urine Processing Assembly Distillation Assembly, a Sabier main controller, rodent research habitats, and empty nitrogen and oxygen recharge tanks. CRS-22 is slated to remain docked with the ISS until early to mid-July before departing the outpost and eventually returning to Earth, splashing down off the coast of Florida for recovery. The CRS-22 Cargo Dragon mission is to mark the beginning of the upgrades to the International Space Station's power generation system, changing the main look of the outpost for the first time since assembly was completed in 2011. Within the next several years, not only will the power system be upgraded, but several new Russian modules will be added, and the first private modules could be sent to the more than 20-year-old outpost. 
What are you most looking forward to with regards to the new space station upgrades and additions? Let me know in the comments below. And if I've earned it, it'd mean the world to me if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share these videos with friends and family. It helps support the channel and also lets me know what topics you're all interested in regarding human space exploration. Additionally, if you're able, consider supporting Orbital Velocity on Patreon. Depending on the level you pledge at, you'll get access to graphics and content not used in videos, as well as your name in future videos published on this channel. Finally, be sure to follow Orbital Velocity on Twitter and Facebook. You can also visit orbital-velocity.com for even more space-related content, including a monthly newsletter called The Space Capsule. Links are in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, Ad Astra.